Greetings, Alpha citizens. This is Craig Allen, and it's time for Alpha City News. In tonight's stories, Gatan prisoners leave as Jamarganon arrives. New hope appears for Radiant. Acrojack stands next to Man Mountain, chops him down with the edge of his hand. Emissary Janna Ball speaks for Atlantis at the League of Nations as Captain Stupendous and Rex Revile battle in the sky. Presto the Witch makes her presence felt, and more on Alpha City News right now. From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only newscast that gives you all the super news in the city or the world. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. It was with a huge sigh of relief that the League of Nations welcomed the Jewel Star League ship Ichthar to our world this past Wednesday. Accompanying the Ichthar was Jamarganon, the Star League's designated defender for our sector of space, to assure a problem-free transfer of the Gatan prisoners to the specially designed holding cells aboard the ship. Jamarganon, which translates roughly as scientist, hero, leader, did not accompany the Ichthar only to assist with the transfer, but also because it is one of the Jewel Star League's most accomplished specialists in Black Dwarf Star Energy, which powers its own abilities and which seem to be responsible for the persistent coma hometown hero Radiant has been in since she sacrificed herself to expose the Gatan agents in our fair city. As the Iktar was secured and lifted off of our world, Jamarganon joined Dr. Escalapius and the Healer at the Eisner University School of Super Medicine to begin consultation on how Radiant's condition might be ameliorated. Alpha City News has not yet been able to speak directly to Jamarganon, but both Empyrean and the High Frontiersmen have made statements assuring Alpha City that Radiant is in good hands. As Jamarganon is greatly respected in the Jewel Star League for both its heroic and scientific accomplishments. Even the Space Cowboy, not noted for respecting those in authority, has grudgingly admitted that Jamarganon is the best bet Radiant has for recovery. We here at ACN, as always, hope for the best for our fallen heroine and welcome the help of our friends from the stars. The tracker from Titan reported that the starship Ichthar had cleared our solar system mere hours after lifting off. Acrojack, the Jack of Clubs, hit the jackpot Thursday night, busting up an illegal fighting ring being run in the Alpha docks. The ring had been kidnapping homeless men and forcing groups of them to fight Nolo, Man Mountain Mancini, who boxing fans may recall was stripped of his heavyweight boxing title when it was discovered that he had paid Dr. Harmon Killig, also known as Gene Freak, to gift him with a small amount of superhuman strength through genetic alteration. Mancini has been sought by police since killing one police officer while resisting arrest on the charges of procuring illegal gene therapies. The fighting ring had been basing its bets on how long it would take Mancini to defeat the group of homeless men, as Mancini's strength made his victory a foregone conclusion, and often the victory resulted in maiming or death for his unfortunate opponents. Undercover officers have revealed that Acrojack, in order to find and break up the ring, had allowed himself to be captured and ended up having to go mano a mano with the Man Mountain. It was expected that the arrival of police forces would forestall the need for Acrojack, who possesses no superhuman abilities, to actually enter the ring with Mancini. But the sudden police raid caused the plexiglass-sided ring to be locked down, and for ten minutes, the fight could not be stopped. Luckily, Acrojack had discovered that, while Mancini's strength had been augmented, he was no more resistant to damage than a normal human. 
by aggravating the barehanded killer, Acrojack was able to cause Mancini to punch the unbreakable plexiglass with full force, causing the ex-boxer to shatter his own fist. After this, it was a simple matter for Acrojack to avoid his dazed opponent's good arm and administer a well-deserved beating. Fifteen members of the fighting ring were arrested. Man Mountain Mancini was taken into custody and transported to the West Side Fellows Hospital to be treated in the high security medical wing. Presto the Witch has been making her return to Alpha City felt over the last week. The Mistress of Magic, absent for several weeks while she traveled in the Mystic Hidden House, stepped right back up to the plate upon her return. She dealt in short order with miscreants ranging from the small time, such as Card Shark, Hat Trick, and the Glue Master, to large, curtailing the attempted breakout of Ibelstar and the Unhinged, and the reappearance of Magmatomic, who, while being stopped from leaving the Triune fusion plant a lava-strewn, irradiated mess, did manage to evade capture once again. Alpha City News' intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston managed to speak to Presto just after she stopped Magmatomic, and reports that the mystical maiden has been working hard both in the city and out, as the Hidden House, which Presto described as being self-aware and helping her, has allowed her to grapple with magical threats which, while never seen in Alpha City, still threaten it greatly. Presto also preferred dealing with mundane threats, even up to the scale of Magmatomic, as being a chance for her to keep in touch with the normal world. While we here at ACN thank Presto for her constant guardianship of our fair city, we hope she will not stretch herself too far. Intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston said as much to the hooded heroine, and was told in return, As long as Alpha City and the world need me, I will do whatever it takes to defend them. I only hope Alpha City believes in me as much as I do in it. Strong words from a strong heroine. Atlantean emissary Jana Ball arrived in Alpha City just before noon on Tuesday for the first meeting between a representative of the underwater kingdom of Atlantis, which lays claim to all of the ocean deeps on the planet, and the League of Nations, the collected representatives of the land-based societies of our world. The historically touchy relationship with Atlantis, a constant since its rediscovery by Dr. Samuel Hightower of the Poseidon Society in the early 20th century, has thawed in recent years, due not only to the League of Nations severely restricting deep-sea fishing and the hunting of whales, and the beefing up of laws covering pollution of the seas, but also because of the cordial relationship between Captain Stupendous and the Atlantean hero Dev Antral, known both above and below the waves as the First Son of Poseidon. The Captain and the First Son met almost ten years ago, when the Sons of Agartha almost managed to bring about the Rising of Dagon, threatening the entire world, and their friendship was cemented when both heroes worked together to stop the Kamplu Raiders from stealing the Earth's oceans. The work of Stupendous and the First Son, as well as the actions of the world to respect the needs of our newly discovered planet mates, opened the way for Atlantis to begin participating in the League of Nations, although only as an observing nation at the moment. The First Son and the Atlantean leader, Eri Orion, known as the first among equals, have expressed hopes that, should these first steps prove fruitful, the League of Nations may, in time, welcome Atlantis as a full partner in steering the fate of our shared world. Emissary Jana Ball, wearing the iconic Atlantean water helmet which allows her to survive outside the sea deeps, expressed just those sentiments in her address to the full conclave of the League 
The first time all league members have been present for one meeting in more than two years. Ball went on to thank Alpha City and the league for its kind welcome, stating that she was looking forward to discovering all she could about the world above the waves, which her people had not experienced for thousands of years. To judge by the enthusiastic response of the league representatives, Jana Ball's hopes for the future were mirrored in each. We here at Alpha City News would like to know what you, the common Alpha citizen, thinks of Atlantis's new presence in the air world. So please, email us at alphacitynews at gmail.com and let us hear your opinion. While Emissary Jana Ball was addressing the Grand Conclave of the League of Nations, Captain Stupendous was assuring that her speech went undisrupted, even by the machinations of his gravest foe. Yes, Rexford Tugwell Reveille, scion of the August Reveille family, turned international supercriminal and human supremacist, known and cursed by the world as Rex Revile, attempted to destroy the nascent political concord between Atlantis and the surface world by assaulting the Atlantean emissary on her first visit to our fair city. Revile, armed with a pair of lightning gloves and a jet pack cobbled together from odds and ends at the Maryvale Penitentiary, no doubt would have succeeded in his nefarious scheme had not the good captain stood, as always, as the stalwart defender of right. Revile used the lightning gloves to shatter the doors of his cell at almost the same time Emissary Ball arrived at the Alpha Docks, on the theory that this would give him enough time to deal with any super-resistance and still allow him to assault the Grand Conclave, just as the emissary was beginning to speak. Revile did indeed manage to best Gargantua, Flying Shark, and Pale Blue Monday before Captain Stupendous, who had been aiding flood relief in Dusseldorf and saving a child in Saigon, was able to face the villain. Despite the jury-rigged nature of the lightning gloves Revile wore, they were effective not in damaging the captain, but in disorienting him to the point where Revile was indeed managing to move ever closer to the League of Nations Conclave building on the west side of Kirby Park. As Revile came within striking distance of his goal, however, Captain Stupendous managed to distract the villain, by playing on Revile's massive and touchy ego. Taunting the miscreant, claiming that his attempt to reach the Conclave building was evidence that Revile was running from the fight, scared of facing another loss and return to imprisonment, the good captain caused Revile to turn his back on his stated goal in order to pursue the defeat of his most hated foe. The battle raged over Kirby Park, circling higher and ever higher, until the two combatants were but pinpricks in the vast blue sky. As the fighters rose above the city, Revile seemed to finally be besting the captain, but his state of hatred and joy at perceived victory failed to notice that the fight had now reached the height where Revile, preparing to deliver a coup de grace, suddenly found himself short of breathable air, and, in short order, unable to maintain consciousness at all. Revile's falling form was caught by the captain, who relieved the misguided man of his weapons and flying pack, and returned him, still sleeping, to the confines of the Maryvale Penitentiary, to awake in custody once again. Captain Stupendous, having secured the criminal, then rushed to meet his Atlantean friend, the First Son, so both could attend a gathering welcoming Emissary Jana Ball, the League of Nations' newest observing member. Boy photographer Johnny Munson accompanied the Neo-Deity teens known as the Infinity Kids as they left Earth yesterday en route to their home, known as Amazingville. 
Riding the universe-spanning sidereal slide, Munson and the Infinity Kids plan on joining Izar and Exegesis of the Neo-Deities in attempting to find the Revelation Engine before the Darkling Knights can bring it to their masters, the anti-gods of the planet Despair. The Revelation Engine is one of the seven great artifacts left over by the gods of Ermond, the reality that the Neo-Deities believe existed before this one, and it is said to be able to enlighten whoever operates it to the point where existence itself becomes a plaything, to be altered at a whim. The Darkling Knights seek the engine so that the Anti-Gods may use it to not only render themselves supreme in our universe, but to also make it easier to find the other six great artifacts the assembly of which would give them the power to extend their dark control over any corner of all that has existed, that exists now, and that will ever exist, banishing all light and decency, and extinguishing life as we know it. As always, Johnny Munson will share his photographs of this cosmic strife with all of us in the pages of the Alpha Citizen Sunday Magazine. And now, this week's Super Combat Scorecard. Structure, the living building, brought down the human wrecking ball. Jack of all trades cut the apron strings of the Lady of Pain. Double Time and Slow Mo had a regular speed battle, which Slow Mo lost. Monster Zero Ultra and Big Weird Joe threw down in the yards, and Joe threw down the monster. The Conundrum Corporation has discovered that the Matryoshka brain could be headed back for Earth. The girl with the key opened a can of whoop-ass on the gate. And lastly, the High Frontiersmen wrangled the asteroid ants back to their home in the Oort Cloud. You've been listening to Alpha City News with Craig Allen. It was produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds were provided by Newsbeds.com. Wherever you found our podcast, please go back and leave a review if you would. And if you enjoyed the show, please tell your friends. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop us a line at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Until next time, thanks for listening, and we hope you have a super day. Hi everyone, this is Carter Lee. I am the producer and writer and sound engineer and chief bottle washer and everything else for Alpha City News. And that should explain why the sound quality and everything else is not the best. Um, It's going into the third month of my producing this podcast and I think, from what I can figure out, there are somewhere between 25 and 30 people who are listening to the podcast right now. and have been for the last couple weeks at least. I wanted to take a minute and thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my little weird superhero stories. It means a lot to me to be able to make this and to share it with people who enjoy it. Uh, At least one, hey Chell, how you doing, has been kind enough to let me know what she thinks about it, at least to a little extent. I'd love to hear what the rest of you think though. I'd really like, over time, to build a community around Alpha City News and, uh, you know, create a large shared universe. You can use anything of what I've already published. Uh, it's all covered under a Creative Commons license. I, if you don't know Creative Commons, it means that I don't give up any rights, but it does allow you to use parts of the... Uh, the uh, universe that I've created so far, as long as you attribute it to me. Um, And I would very much like people to do that. I would love to see what people think the various heroes look like. So please, if you can, take a minute, drop me an email at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Let me know what you think, or who you like, who you don't like, any suggestions you have, any creative criticism. I'd love to hear all of it. You, of course, can find us to download on iTunes or at Libsyn 
or on Stitcher or Sprecher, I think it's called, or Mixcloud or Soundcloud or at the Internet Archives, or you can watch a static movie of the Alpha City News logo with the podcast behind it at YouTube. Uh, Wherever you do find it, though, if you can, please leave a review. That's how it'll get noticed by more people. You can also uh, check out uh, alphacitynews.wordpress.com or alphacitynews under Tumblr or Twitter. And you'll notice on the Tumblr and WordPress pages there are donate buttons. So there's that. Again, I just wanted to say thank you for listening. Even if this is the only episode you're ever going to listen to, I do appreciate that you took the time to listen. And I hope you find something that you enjoy more out there. If you come back next week, well, I promise we will have another thrilling round of strange adventures from the Silver Age world of Alpha City. And until then, I hope you have a super week. Thanks a lot.